We can't imagine the transportation industry without freight brokers, correct? They connect shippers with carriers, helping move goods across the country and make a lot of money without taking too much risk. That's their game. But some brokers have flexible morals and won't miss a chance to scam just about anyone. And uh, if you're not carefully enough, the moment you realize you're being scammed by a dishonest broker would be the moment that is too late. But if you have been in the trucking business long enough, chances are that fraudulent brokers have taken or at least tried to take your money. How much time and energy should you invest in chasing the unpaid bill? Could you have seen the red flags before you got this headache? Sure, sometimes the customer is just uh, slow to pay while the other times they may be taking advantage of the fact that uh, you don't have a big office team dedicated to collect these bills. And still, sometimes the broker is a fraud and your money is long gone. In this lesson, we will shed the light and the topic of dishonest brokers and give you enough information to stay vigilant and protect your business. Dishonest, or to put it bluntly, fraudulent brokerage involves brokers who don't know what they're supposed to do or try to cheat the system for their own benefit. Instead of honestly fulfilling their responsibilities, they use their intermediary position to deceive others from their own personal gain. In this unit, we will talk about such brokers and the things their scammy minds come up with to take your money. Fraudulent brokers are no better than any other shady character and they have their own set of shady tools to take money from hard-working truckers. Let's take a look at the dark arsenal uh, of deceptive tools. Non-payment or underpayment. What is the first thing that uh, comes to mind when someone says scam brokers? Not getting paid the money they owe you, right? Especially if the amount was agreed upon. The reasons may be different, but the result is the same. Payment is withheld or delayed indefinitely. Load manipulation. They don't even have to see the load to manipulate it, but they can misrepresent it or manipulate the details of the load to rip off truckers. Their goal is to shove the load they have on a trucker. Even though they know the load is a question, may exceed the capacity of uh, their vehicle or require special equipment or permits. They just want to get their money and don't really care about what's gonna happen to the load. Next we have unauthorized deductions. Another classic, if they don't subtract, they add. To their own benefit, of course, and the fraudulent brokers may take unauthorized fees or expenses out of your agreed upon payment, reducing the money they owe the trucker. I'm talking about administrative fees, uh, fuel surcharges, insurance costs, or other expenses you never talked about. Next we have ghost loads. Nothing paranormal here, just uh, maybe an unnatural desire to keep scamming. Brokers post loads that don't exist, luring truckers to a specific location for pickup, but there's no load. Why would anyone want to do that in the first place? Because dishonest brokers may use this tactic to, to, to promote their service, uh, manipulate rates, uh, lure unsuspected uh, individuals into sharing sensitive information, or even gathering information on truck uh, capacity, and so on. Next, we have false documentation. And the story would not be complete without a good old document falsification and forgery. Bills of lading, uh, proofs of delivery, fraudulent brokers can use any document to deceive truckers and withhold payment or deny completion of the job. It's impossible to note that while these fraudulent practices can occur, the majority of uh, freight brokers are legitimate and value their relationship with truckers. To reduce the risk of uh, being defrauded, truckers should be cautious when working with, with new or unfamiliar brokers, uh, research the broker's reputation and history, and considering using platforms with uh, additional safeguards. While the aforementioned types of uh, broker's dirty tricks don't really hurt a trucking company so much, maybe beyond uh, wasting time, uh, a lot of nerves maybe, the double brokerage, uh, the fraudulent broker behavior we'll talk about in the next chapter, could cost you virtually everything you've got. Your time, your load, your contract, or even your business and whatnot. Double brokerage. Where there's one crook broker, there can always be two to cheat you. Accepting a load and then passing it to another broker without informing the, uh, or obtaining the trucker's consent, it's called double brokering. It is usually followed by payment delays and disputes 
because the tracker may not be aware of the other players in the game or the terms of the new agreement. So what kind of trouble can double brokering bring to uh, an unsuspecting tracking deal? Let's start with payment delays. Double brokerage can easily lead to payment delays because there are now two brokers involved. The more brokers, the more time it takes to get your money. Basically, it's one of the universal laws of trucking. But that delay could be just the first of a trucker's problems because it triggers the avalanche of financial difficulties by crippling their cash flow. Of course, a large company probably won't even notice, but a small carrier can be really hit hard. Communication breakdown. Now, the more the merrier when it comes to uh, getting a clear picture of who you are working with as a carrier, uh, there may be a confusion in delivery instructions, uh, changes in the pickup and delivery locations and so on. Are you sure you can do your job on a level playing field when the goalposts uh, keep moving? Next, we have disputes and liability. And the brokers involved are constantly fighting over payment and delivery discrepancies. And if there is any incident during the trip, there's another reason to pick a fight liability. Uh, no one wants to pay anyone, uh, so expect a lot of uh, back chat. This is just one way uh, scammers can set up a dual brokerage scheme. They start by buying a carrier MC and reporting to the FMCSA that they have a truck. Then they pose an, as an owner operator or trucking companies to get loads from brokers. When they have loads, uh, they book them with a real carrier using a broker's MC. Sometimes they can even pay the carrier they uh, book the load with, uh, but more often than not, they couldn't care less about paying. As a result, the carrier goes after the shipper or the real broker to whom the load was assigned. So, broker one sold the load to a carrier for $4,000, who turned out to be a double broker. Carriers can sell loads on load boards in order to make it happen. They have another uh, broker MC and using the broker MC, they can do whatever they want. So the carrier, which is a broker as well, puts the load back on the load board with $5,000 under his broker MC. Let's call this guy the double broker. So the double broker uh, sold the load to another carrier and this carrier fulfilled the load. Now carrier invoices uh, the double broker to pay for the shipment. The double broker invoices broker one and the broker invoices the customer, or if uh, already has money for the shipment pays. Broker one pays the money to the double broker, and the double broker decides that he doesn't want to pay the carrier and simply flies out, uh, never answering calls again. Litigation begins because carrier uh, did not receive this uh, uh, money due to an intermediary in the uh, person of the double broker who turned out to be tricky in his chain and enter the deal in order to pull off an act of fraud. Don't think uh, there are only scammers out there. Most freight brokers operate ethically, but broker scams and double brokerage have been a major problem for truckers for some time. To navigate the industry more safely and reduce the risks associated with uh, broker fraud, truckers need to better understand the concept of double brokerage and use their knowledge to be proactive. So in this unit, we are gonna talk about what it means for your business to be defrauded. You may be thinking, what do you mean? We're talking about my money, what else is there? Sure, you're right about that, but the money you lose means something more to your business. Let's talk about how fraud brokerage and uh, scams in general affect the operation of your trucking business. Fraud can affect your finances, uh, the smooth flow of your business, your company's reputation, and even your, your entire business. The first and most obvious negative effect of fraud is financial loss. Dishonest brokers don't pay on time uh, or at all the money your company was planning to receive and uh, pay for fuel maintenance, wages, or to invest in your business, etc. It disappears into thin air, leaving you scrambling for dollars to keep the business afloat. The lack of money could lead to operational disruptions that eat up a significant amount of your valuable time and resources. It takes a lot of time and effort to chase down unpaid invoices, resolve disputes, and pursue legal action. Some scammers uh, simply hope that you'll give up on them and just leave it uh, with their money. The time loss can translate into inefficiencies, missed opportunities, and added stress. 
If you think that fraudulent brokers are the bad guys in this scenario and that they deserve a bad reputation and a negative review that you can give to them, you're absolutely right. But as a result of working uh, with these shady characters, the reputations of carriers and owner operators can be tarnished as well. If you are involved in a fraudulent transaction, even if you are a victim, word would spread out and the other players in the game, such as uh, brokers, shippers, would have a hard time trusting you again. This can make your business life a, a lot harder because it would make it difficult for your company to get new business. I don't have to tell you uh, what the, it means for the future of your business and you certainly don't want to know what it could be mean for you. Another downside of uh, fighting over fraud is that it poisons your relationship with the carriers, brokers and shippers involved. I'm not talking about these uh, fraudsters. Obviously, I'm talking about everyone else caught up in the middle. Basically, your entire business network could go down in flames undermined by scammers. And yes, lawsuits and uh, costs, let's not forget those. If you decide to go to court to collect your unpaid fees or seek damages to be prepared, then be prepared for a long battle and uh, legal fees that can add to your financial burden. The last thing I want to talk to you about is that the emotional and mental stress. I know we're all tough uh, rug truckers and we can drive the truck for a legal amount of time and not even break a sweat, but we're all still human and mental health is important to us when we're here for the long haul. The frustration, uh, disappointment, and sense of injustice that comes from being ripped off can take a toll on their well-being and overall morale. A good example of non-payment is what happened with the following carrier. He took a load from Salt Lake City, Utah to Chicago, a pretty long run that promised to pay uh, about $3,500, a decent pay considering the pickup from uh, West. The broker was responsive uh, throughout the entire load process up to the POD receival. However, after the receiving a receival of the carrier's invoice, things started to look suspicious. The email system showed that the broker wasn't even opening emails with the invoice or follow-ups from the carrier. Factoring couldn't help either because they had a recourse agreement with the carrier. They also mentioned that the broker is not responsive and doesn't provide any payment status. And then we turn the case over to the account manager who can handle it. The account manager, along with our legal department, reach out to their broker's insurance company and demanded payment for this load. After about two weeks of struggling and communication with the insurance, uh, they had the broker to pay out the entire amount. So here are some of our recommendations. It's important to follow the instructions on load validation before, while, and after booking the load with any brokers, some of which are credit check, checking the main line, facility check, insurance status can be pending or revocating, following up with the broker after the invoice have been, has been sent. These actions are considerably lowering, lowering the risk of being scammed, but there is no guarantee uh, how the broker will behave when paying. That's why the actions that we took are the extra measures to solve any potential problems with the payments. Depending on the outcome of how things may change, it's very important to make the right choices in order to get it fixed. So uh, there are always a set of actions to be taken depending on the scenario type. It is critical for carriers and owner operators to be vigilant, do their research, and take proactive steps uh, to mitigate the risk. By being proactive and cautious in their business dealings, they can protect themselves from the damaging consequences and maintain a safe and reputable position in the trucking industry. And always, I mean always, be prepared. All I'm saying is scammers are gonna scam and you need to get all the knowledge you can get to fight back and uh, keep your business safe. And with our lessons, you're on the right track. Okay, by now you probably understand how uh, bad any kind of broker scam can be for your business. But this knowledge is nothing without learning about the red flags suspicious activity that can give you a heads up of the trouble ahead. So in this unit, I will tell you about some of the red flags so that you can be proactive and steer clear of danger. Here are the red flags to look for. If something seems too good to be true, it probably is. The same goes for the rates. If they're too good or too low, there may be something fishy going on. Why should someone offer a low rate 
Scammers may be trying to lure brokers or truckers or both into accepting their deal. Uh, or they might promise higher rates than they agree to to try to shut up with the money. Sure, there's nothing wrong with getting paid well, but to be on the safe side, you need to make sure you're dealing with a legitimate company that will pay you when the load is delivered. Time is money, and that means scammers are after it too. Sure, they don't need your minutes and hours, but they can use your time and, tr and try to turn it into their advantage. Next, pay attention to the paperwork you receive. Scammers may pose as a representative of a legitimate company, and their documents may look legitimate. The problem is that uh, there could be the same company name, but different addresses, and you won't know it. Usually, legitimate brokers use their own domain email service, and if their email address is at gmail.com, it looks a little bit sketchy. If a broker's contact information, such as uh, phone numbers or address, uh, cannot be verified or led to none, uh, it raises suspicions of fraudulent activity. Also, look for inconsistencies or changes in paperwork, such as inaccurate cargo information, altered contracts, or suspicious amendments. You won't see these things in the accurate and consistent documentation of legitimate brokers. Another is when a carrier communicates with a broker who is vague about an important load detail, such as a shipper's identity, uh, delivery schedules, or payment terms. The smoke and mirrors raise suspicions about the broker's intentions and may mean they're hiding critical information. Fraudulent brokers may also rush you by creating a sense of urgency. They're hoping you'll miss something, uh, not do your research, and make your decision in a hurry, timely manner. Uh, sure, it could be a broker with a really bad time management, but this never hurts to double check and be on the safe side. If a broker requests payment through an unconventional method, such as wire transfer to personal accounts or untraceable online platforms, it may be a bad sign as well. These requests may be an attempt to circumvent secure and traceable payment channels. Why should you be concerned? Because it may be a scam, so be aware. Let's take a quick look of uh, some of the obvious red flags. Just because they're uh, obvious doesn't mean you don't need to pay attention. Multiple identity changes, a broker operates under different names, allies, uh, or company identities, making it uh, difficult to establish a consistent identity. And this behavior raises concerns about the broker's credibility and suggests potential fraudulent practices. Lack of proper licensing or certification. A carrier discovers that a broker is considering working with and does not have the necessary license or certifications required by regulations, and this lack of proper credential is a red flag indicating a potential fraudulent behavior. A negative reputation of reviews. Carriers may encounter negative reviews or warnings from other industries, professionals, regarding a particular broker's payment practices, contract violations, or dishonest dealings. Uh, these real-life experiences and testimonials serve as a valuable insight and indicators of potential fraud. Late or non-payment at all? A carrier completes a delivery but experiences repeated delays in receiving payment from the brokers. Despite submitting invoices and following up, the broker continually makes excuses or fails to pay altogether. This situation suggests potential fraud as the broker is intentionally withholding payment or exhibiting a, pat a pattern of non-payment. Remember, these red flags don't necessarily guarantee fraudulent brokerage, but you should be raising concerns and prop promptly further investigation. Uh, being aware of these red flags allows carriers and owner operators to be cautious and take the necessary steps when dealing with brokers. How to avoid falling a victim. To protect your business from dishonest agents, it's important to take proactive measures. Before we talk about some of the steps you can take, I would like to remind you that uh, you need to train the dispatchers uh, you work with to pay attention to the details of all the documents they handle. This will save a lot of trouble and time without having to deal with fraudster fraudsters themselves or consequences of their actions. Now, let's get back to the steps you can take. Thoroughly research and vet brokers. Before working with a broker, do your research. Check their credentials, reviews, and reputation in the industry. It's wise to ask for references and reach out to other carriers who have worked with them to gain insight into their reliability. Written contracts. 
always have a written contract that outlines the terms of your agreement. Having everything in uh, writing helps you protect your rights and ensure clarity between both parties. Next, trust your instincts. If something seems off or uh, too good to be true, trust your instincts. If a broker makes promises that seem unrealistic or avoids your uh, questions, it could always be a red flag. Get legal advice. If you can find yourself dealing with a dishonest broker who refuses to pay or engages in fraudulent practices, consult with an attorney who specializes in uh, transportation law. Now, what do you do if you got scammed? Stay informed and educated. Check relevant websites and platforms that monitor the rate uh, of uh, freight brokers, shippers, and receivers, such as uh, freight checkers. If a broker's license is revoked or uh, they file for bankruptcy, this information will be posted there and on the FMCSA as well, or a broker snapshot. Contact the involved parties. Reach out to the both broker, uh, brokers involved in the double broker situation. Clearly explain the situation and ask for an explanation. Keep in mind that you should check the payment status within five days after delivery because if the original broker pays the scammy one, it would be uh, much harder to get the money uh, owed to you. Demand resolution. Request that the brokers involved resolve the issue properly. Report to authorities. If you suspect fraudulent activity, you can consider reporting the incident to relevant authorities such as the FMCSA or law enforcement agencies such as the FBI. Contact a legal professional. A lawyer with experience in transportation and logistics can guide you through your options and help you protect your rights. Notify load board platforms. If the double brokerage occurred uh, throughout the load board platform, report the incident to the platform's customer support. Uh, they might have uh, mechanisms to address such issues, such as the DAT or truck stop load board. Preserve evidence. Keep copies of all your correspondence, documents, and records related to this transaction. Also, until you get paid, don't send the original documents to anyone. This could be important if you need to take legal actions. And remember, not all brokers are dishonest, and many reputable brokers strive to build long-term partnerships uh, based on trust and reliability. And by being vigilant, conducting proper research, and taking the necessary precautions, you can mitigate the risks associated with dishonest brokers and protect your business in the transportation industry. We recently had a case where the carrier booked a load coast to coast. The payout was 6,200 at a rate about 3.5 a mile. It was a late uh, load on a Friday. The dispatcher wanted to make sure the load was indeed owned by a legitimate broker, X. He did the background check and everything was uh, set. The load had one pick and two drops. At the pickup, the driver was given a BOL with all the details of the freight and everything looked good. All the details matched the rate con, except the top left corner said tendered to a different broker named M. The dispatcher immediately passed the case on to the account manager to investigate. When the broker X was asked about this, he said that everything was correct, nothing to worry about, and this is how the shipper issues its BOLs. The account manager decided to dig deeper and uh, actually find, found out who the real customer was. And he said it indeed belonged to a Y broker. Uh, while the investigation was being conducted, the driver had already delivered the load and got all the paperwork. Next, we started to pursue this case and got a hold of Y broker. And it turns out he sold this load for 3,200 and we got it for 6,200. So it was obvious that X wasn't gonna pay us. Y uh, hasn't paid X either, so we were in luck and we got a free 200 on the second day. And our luck didn't run out as we have decided to involve our legal department and they got a hold of X broker insurance uh, company and in one month we recovered the extra 6,200. This is how the carrier got to make even more money after being scammed. All of this uh, was possible because of the quick investigation by the dispatch team. There were little moments like checking the status of the ex broker, uh, talking to the uh, founder, uh, then quickly contacting the Y owner. Everything was done just to keep control. Protecting yourself from dishonest brokers means being vigilant and taking the necessary precautions. Research potential partners, ask questions, and trust your instincts. 
By staying informed and exercising cautions, you can protect yourself and your business from scams and maintain smooth operations in the transportation industry. Remember, fraud prevention requires constant vigilance and active participation. By taking these preventive measures, carriers and owner operators can minimize the risk of falling victim to fraudulent practices and protect their business interests. To summarize, dishonest freight brokers pose significant risks to carriers and owner operators in the transportation industry. Their fraudulent practices can result in financial loss, operational uh, disruption, reputational damage, and even business failure. To protect themselves from these scammers, truckers should be alert, do their research, use risk written contracts, trust their instincts, seek legal advice when necessary, and stay informed about current scams and recommended best practice. By taking these proactive steps, carriers and owner operators can mitigate the risks associated with dishonest brokers and maintain a safe and reputable position in the industry. It is critical that they remain proactive and actively participate in protecting the business from fraudulent practice. With awareness and cautions, truckers can confidently navigate the industry and protect their interests from dishonest brokers.